Greetings and welcome. I'm Chris Passo, an experienced programmer with several decades of coding, currently living my best life in the legal industry. I'm proficient in around 16 languages, although only one of them is spoken. I'm a big fan of communication, and a new form of communication is in the realm of low-code, no-code technologies. These platforms allow non-programmers to enhance their work life or other colleagues. Sometimes it's speeding up repetitive tasks or streamlining complex processes. One of the intriguing roles I undertook to distinct my legal career was at GTE, which later merged into Verizon. In this capacity, I worked closely with the customer support call technicians, observing their workflow. My objective was to identify inefficiencies, repetitive tasks, and other common obstacles. Then, as a team effort, we explored methods to enhance efficiency and automate mundane or over-complex tasks. Even today, I apply the same mindset when engaging with attorneys or support staff, but we can't automate everything. I believe there should be a balancing technology and my success lies in discovering and maintaining that equilibrium. For instance, while shutting down all servers might be impeccable security, it's not necessarily practical. Similarly, in the realm of programming, I question whether we need to install Visual Studio and write .NET code when a simple Excel macro could suffice. Within this equilibrium, adhering to certain rules and guidelines become essential. These principles ensure that our achievements are consistent and reproducible. Today, I'll provide an overview of the curriculum of our upcoming sessions, which we fondly refer to as AppDev 101. If you perform a Google search on the software development lifecycle, you'll come across various multi-step processes. However, you'll notice a common thread among them all. They emphasize the importance of breaking tasks into stages, or what I like to call baby steps. Some of these stages have specific sequence, while others can run in parallel. The allocation of tasks to different stages can also change from time to time. We discuss how these principles are valid for low code, no code, even if in an abbreviated fashion. These concepts that have a special place in my heart, and I believe they're essential for any software project to thrive. I'll share personal anecdotes illustrating where I've effectively applied them, recount less than successful instances, and hopefully offer some valuable lessons along the way. So let's break them down together. Identifying the current issue. What are the current challenges that need our attention? What is the ultimate goal we're aiming for? How should this process ideally work in a perfect world? During this initial phase of the software development lifecycle, we gather insights from attorneys or staff, industry experts, and other programmers to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the existing system and seek opportunities for improvement. In the planning stage, the team evaluates the resources and costs needed to implement our analyzed requirements, all while identifying and addressing risk. Essentially, we assess the project's feasibility in crafting strategies to ensure successful implementation with minimal risk. The planning phase involves activities like cost-benefit analysis, scheduling, resource estimation, and the creation of a software requirement specification document, which is shaped by input from attorneys or staff. This section sets expectations and common objectives, providing a comprehensive roadmap to achieve our project goals. Moving on to the design phase, engineers analyze requirements and propose the best solutions for creating the software. They consider integration possibilities, technology choices, and the development tools. This stage starts with translating software specifications into a design specification which then undergoes more review by the stakeholders. Their feedback and suggestions are crucial 
for successful project execution. With a solid plan in place, we transition to the development phase. Developers should follow agreed upon blueprint and adhere to defined coding guidelines and practices. We establish a consistent code style, which includes defining file naming and variable conventions. This results in organized and understandable code, which in turn simplifies testing in the next phase. Up next is code testing. This phase involves rigorous testing for defects and shortcomings. Our goal is to ensure that code matches the defined requirements, utilizing a combination of automated and manual user testing. Quality analysis is a continuous process and often takes place concurrently with the development phase. Now, we're ready to deploy the software into staging environments. This step allows users to review the product safely before it's released, helping us catch any final mistakes in advance. During implementation, our development team codes the product and identifies smaller coding tasks to achieve the final results. We also ensure that we have a separate build and production environments to guarantee uninterrupted customer access while we make changes or upgrades. Finally, we reach the maintenance phase. Here our team addresses bugs, customer concerns, and software changes. We also monitor software performance, security, and the user experience while looking to identify any improvements. That was a lot to cover. We will break each section into more in-depth videos. Next time, We'll dive into stage one, identifying issues. Thank you for your time.